Okay, now I'll take you through a simple three fluorescence channel capture and overlay. So to do this, what we're gonna do is, uh, we've got our slide mounted on the stage here. We have the objectives below the stage that can be selected by using this wheel. And as I switch between positions, it updates and tells me which objective is in which position here. We're gonna be looking at some cells that are stained in three fluorescence channels, GFP, Texas Red, and DAPI. So to do this, we're gonna start off with the GFP channel, and I just click on the GFP button here. The motor takes the light cube to the GFP position, and we're now looking at GFP live. And I can uh, move my sample here with the stage controls and select an area of interest. Uh, if I find something that looks uh, particularly interesting, I can zoom in on it, or I can increase and decrease the fluorescence intensity by moving this slider up and down here. Um, if I want to look at it in more detail, I can move this zoom bar up here, and we can make fine adjustments to the focal plane, and then click Capture, and we'll have that entire GFP channel. In order to capture the other channels, I can do the same sort of thing in sequence and it will overlay, or I can actually sit here and uh, ask it to collect uh, the, the remaining two channels by selecting them in the software here and clicking capture, and it will go ahead and add those two to the image. Once we're in here, um, it's possible to go in and zoom in, look at an area in detail. We also have the capability of turning on and off a scale bar, uh, moving this around on the screen, selecting a location for it, uh, or we can put on a grid, select uh, a density of, of grid here, say every 100 microns, so you can tell uh, how many cells there are per unit area in your image. And when you save the images, the images will be saved with these overlays. We also have the capability of showing a histogram of the intensity distribution here for the channel. Um, there's the capability of going in doing annotations, so you can select a tool here and measure an area within a rectangle. It gives you a calibrated area here. This is because uh, the calibration of the system is automatically detected and known uh, based off of the objective that it's using. Some of the other tools that are in here, we have the capability of going in and uh, doing cell counting. So if we do that, we can bring this tool up here and it automatically isolates the DAPI channel. We can go in and select uh, this area here, showing us some representative nuclei that have been stained with DAPI. And then uh, I usually try to switch over to the monochrome channel, so it looks a little easier uh, to find the cells. And then we select a target, so we just kind of identify what our targets are here. This is a target, this is an example of a target, and so is this one and then we select a background. And by selecting the background, it will automatically go in and calculate the cells and circle them for us here. There's the ability to go in and make further refinements to this. We can actually go in here and uh, change this base off of area and then take out the smallest units here, which are probably not nuclei, but fragments of cells, and then get a revised cell count here or object count of um, 64 cells. When we first turn this on, you can see that we're not in focus here. So I can either use the coarse focus and the fine focus here. I can use the mouse wheel to focus this. But we also have an option in here to do autofocus. So if I click on the coarse autofocus, it's going to th go through this range that's defined here. And it will try to find approximately the best location. Let's actually pick this one. And if I double click, I'll get a zoom and it's actually done a really nice job with the autofocus there. We don't need to refine it any further. If I want to, I can move my mouse wheel up and down here, but you can see it's already looking pretty good. The M5000 can also do Z stacks. So in here, we can show that by going into the Automate tab, selecting Z stack, and we get this set of options here. We can go in and um, have this set above and below our location that we want for the focal plane. And then once this we've entered those values for the top and bottom, uh, it will automatically compute the number of images that we're going to get. And um, it will uh, execute that when we click on Start. It's going to go through and 
capture 15 planes of focus here. And at the end, uh, it opens up a folder where it's put those images and we have the ability to scroll through the images. Right here, if we click on the results, uh, this is midway through the stack and we can just bring this up and down. We can actually just zoom this up a little bit. And you can see as I'm focusing up and down through this sample, we're going above and below that optimal focal plane. We also have a review tab where you can go in and look at images that you previously acquired on the instrument. Um, these images can come from the local hard drive built into the microscope or uh, from a flash drive that's attached or they can be retrieved from the cloud. Uh, in this case we're looking at uh, some images that are uh, on a flash drive and when I click on these and look at them they, they load up and they allow me to go in and zoom, pan, look at various details and review, review my images. The illumination system is still based on an LED light cube, which has the LED built inside with electronic controls. Uh, it can be turned on and off as many times as you like without shortening the lifespan, and the lifespan is over 50,000 hours. With 50,000 hours of use, you can actually turn it on for eight hours a day, seven days a week, and it will be over 17 years before you hit 50,000 hours. Another feature of the M5000 is the ability for it to take on-stage incubation. With an optional on-stage incubator you can attach to the microscope, you can keep your cells alive for extended periods of time and do time-lapse imaging. With the on-stage incubator, we can control a variety of features. Um, we can go in here and show that we've got access to um, temperature and humidity as well as the gas combinations here. The incubator can actually mix up to three different gas lines, so typically CO2, oxygen, and um, if you want to study hypoxia, uh, we can put in nitrogen, and you can have control over that by specifying uh, different stages of incubation. So under time lapse, we can go in here and set up our channels. We can use the incubator and turn on autofocus. We can go in and uh, select transmitted for the autofocus channel and then we can define different runs. So the first run could be a baseline where you're just looking at the cells in normal conditions. Um, we can set that up for a certain duration, say uh, 10 minutes. Then we can go to the next phase where um, we can switch over and save this as a TIFF or a PNG file in addition to creating a movie file at the very end uh, so that you can review the entire sequence. And we can put in a run uh, after that baseline uh, take ourselves into hypoxic conditions and study the effects on them. This is all something that can be added to the M5000 very easily and it's uh, completely integrated and controlled through the existing software. Uh, there's no additional charge for, for, this, uh, for the software component. The EVOS M5000 includes access to a digital Smart Start online guide which you can log into and it has various information, it has a system overview that gives you the different components in here. You can also um, look at instrument care, there's information on how to change the light cubes or how to change an objective um, and all this uh, consists of animation so when you click on this it highlights uh, the tools and um, parts that you'll need. This is a, a spare objective that we'll be adding to it. And um, it takes you through step by step. So um, basically you go in and you have to remove the slide holder or the cover that's going over the objectives. Um, then we're going to move the stage so that we have access to the objective turret underneath here. Um, then it has inf information about uh, removing by unscrewing. You can see it's animated, we unscrewed and removed the objective, etc. Uh, so it takes you through step by step the things that you need to do to put in a new objective and configure it in the software. Another capability we've added to the M5000 is the ability to synthesize color images for you. Now the instrument normally comes and does come in this case with a high sensitivity monochrome camera for optimum fluorescence detection. However, uh, our engineers have put together a beautiful system that allows you to strobe red, green, and blue LEDs and synchronize that with the camera capture and synthesize a color image. So I'll give you an example of that. 
We've got uh, a slide here, a tissue slide, a stain of cirrhosis of the liver, and I'm going to go over here to the RGB transmitted light mode and turn this on. And you can see that the monochrome camera is giving us a, a beautiful rendition of color here of the tissue. And uh, if you look closely at the illumination here, I can put my hand down here. You can see that there's a flickering and that is the red, green, and blue LEDs being strobed uh, over the sample to give us the, the color information. With this kind of capability, you're able to go in and look at standard histology slides, anything that has any kind of color information, and capture beautiful images with it. Anybody can walk up to the microscope and get started on it with a minimum of training.